Welcome to the Fire Thunder Gaming Channel. I'm your host, the Fire Thunder Zombie. And we've got a special for you today. We've got an interview with the co-founder and owner of Heart of Gaming. Uh, I'd like to introduce yourself and yeah, let me my know name's you Mark Starkey. I'm actually the the founder and the sole owner of Heart of the Gaming. Cool. <laughs> no worries. Um, right, start with first questions. Mm -hmm. uh, How did you get into gaming? Uh, well, I. Um, my, uh, my mother is Mexican. Uh, we went on holiday to see some relatives in the States all the way back in 1989. Uh, everybody there was just mad for Super Mario Brothers uh, at the time on the 8-bit NES. And it was estimated there was like literally one console in every three houses there at the time. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah, it was huge. You know, people would rent games from Blockbuster as well. Um, it was certainly more kind of, you know, the, the, the whole kind of early... Sort of late 80s early 90s video game boom was definitely yeah, yeah. real full effect over there and you know I came back and as soon as I did I was like mom buy me an airs buy me an airs um, which of course eventually she did <laughs> and um, you know console gaming basically ultimately led to the arcade and the arcade ultimately led to part of gaming in short cool cool uh, what's your favorite game and genre Wow, that's a tough one. It used to be fighting games. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, I think I've outgrown them simply because I played so many of them. You know, it's a very kind of, um, I don't want to say age specific thing. There are people my age who are still playing all the latest fighting games, but for me, the real, um, the real attraction of it was doing it publicly. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on any given day of the week um, in the arcade. Um, you know, these days I sort of play a few of the old platformers that I like. Um, very into um, dance, well, a dance game called uh, In the Groove. Okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. like a yeah. spiritual successor to DDR. And a few puzzle games, most notably Money Puzzle Exchanger. You know, okay. Uh, yeah, it's again, it's another one of these uh, niche underground Japanese games. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's great fun. Uh, I'm a big fan of the whole um, push start, play your game, stop. You know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no complications, no hold-ups, no DLC, no firmware. Yeah, that's straight that, in, play yeah, it and done. That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. That's how it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favourite console of all time, if you have one? Whoa, that is... I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with um, the Super NES, the Super Nintendo, uh, Super Famicom, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, after the hype of the NES, to get something that effectively carried on the good work, um, albeit, you know, more technically superior. And of course, it's probably the only console to this day that has a lot of good games in every genre, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. So yeah, that would be that. Uh, so what else led you to start in Heart of Gaming? Um, I really didn't like um, the idea that gaming was becoming more and more based at home. Um, I think that, you know, the arcades did a lot for, you know, a lot for people in a lot of ways that maybe people don't realize. For example, the social aspect of it, um, yeah, yeah, you know, getting out there, being with your friends, blah, 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 you know, really kind of having that um, out there experience as opposed to maybe just playing with your brother or your next door neighbor yeah, yeah. Uh, in your house. Um, and I think as the internet gains more and more of a foothold on society, which is to be expected, you know, um, it's important that at least a few places are left whereby, you know, you can kind of go and have that, that sort of the, those online meets, if you like, but in an offline environment, because yeah, yeah. people don't realize it, but people skills are a very, very big thing. Oh, yeah. um, they're very important. And something like the arcade, I truly believe, helped me sort of develop my people skills. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. If you like, the ability to just talk to anybody and anyone at random. Um, I think I think the internet can lead people to mistakenly feel that they are introverted um, when actually, you know, they're probably not. They just haven't been given that chance to kind of get out there and really find out who they are in, you know, the group of people IRL, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah, definitely. The, the internet has made it a lot more singular. Everyone's at home. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is nice. They can You can meet. My friends absolutely yeah good. I mean you know we see people come in here sometimes um, you know they uh, they come in with they come in single and you know a couple of times some people have actually walked out and gone on to be in relationships so oh cool there's that real sort of good feeling that you're um, you're doing something incredibly positive that is having a 
knock-on positive effect just, you know, further than just beyond video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm. Uh, I saw you make your own cabinets. How did that get started? Make my own? Well, modify, shall modify. I say. Um, well, uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I mean, ever since an early age, I've had this very sort of keen knowledge of um, how do things, how things work. Yeah. Um, you know, and... I would often open up my dad's video recorder, open up my own <laughs> radio control car just because I wanted to see how things worked. And then, you know, you get this real sort of... So, yeah, you've, uh, you've always tinkered with stuff and things. Yeah, I, I like to know how things work, especially electronically and uh, the whole analog, the, the old era of stuff where things were designed to be repaired. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rather than, I mean, you know... Replaced as Yeah, replaced as it is now. I mean... Things were built to last, now they're built to fail. It is what it is, but yeah, with regards to the old stuff, um, I don't know. Uh, first it started off with me wanting to sort of, um, you know, revitalize uh, old equipment, yeah. you know, and then, you know, sort of get to the mid nineties and it's like, well, I think the first mod project I ever did was to cut the tabs out of my US Super Nintendo's cartridge slot. Okay. So that Japanese games could fit in. Ah, and okay. And even yeah, though yeah, that yeah. is an incredibly small thing, just removing two bits of plastic, it's still very like, am I, you know, is this is what I'm doing actually going to better the performance of this? And, yeah, and yeah. it did. And so, you know, with the old stuff, you really, uh, you know, with anything, I guess, really, you want it to operate at maximum efficiency yeah, yeah. Um, you want it to you know it's like in this day and age we really need to offer as much software um, and games to people um, as we possibly can so I look for new ways to do that all the time yeah yeah you know cool mm. uh, what's the community reaction and feedback been since you've opened Heart Game um I think it, it, it's you know the, the, the overall fee um, feedback has been very positive um Obviously, in the beginning, there were people who were disheartened, which I understand um, that, you know, we'd moved a considerable distance from our previous location. Uh, um, you know, that was difficult, but, you know, people are making the effort to come, you know, I still get people every day, oh yeah, we went to the old one in North Acton, wow, this one's so much more bigger and spacious. Um, and as well, obviously, we've embraced a new community in the town of Croydon. Um, so overall, you know, it, it, it is going pretty well. I think um, it's one of these businesses where, as history has shown me, um, people have like a shelf life in the arcade where they will yeah. they will come for a period, and then something will happen. It's like for me when the Namco Wonder Park closed in 1998. Um, you know, what 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 does this mean for everyone now? And basically, it meant jobs, uh, girlfriends. Um, you know, uh, maybe to meet up at a friend's house on the weekend for a game session. Um, you know, but I think our love for the arcade is always there. Um, it comes back around, it manifests itself in some way, shape or form, and I'm proud to be doing what I'm doing, you know? Cool. Has the, the move from Acton to here hmm. been a... Is there any major positives or major bad things, or is it kind well, of okay? we've got more space, um, and we've got a lot more foot traffic. Um, you know, there's room for development, um, the feedback has been good, we're doing things that, you know, we didn't do before, actually got um, an anime shop on board now, um, we're in the middle of sort of discussing the potential for a maid cafe here, um, you know, the, 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 there are, some, I'm not going to lie, some things have been lost, um, since, like for example the ability to stay open late. You know, uh, we can't stay open past 8 p.m. because we have to obviously abide by the rules of the shopping center. Um, you know, I've been meaning for a while to sort of get a bar going. Um, not too, I don't think that's going to happen here. I mean, but on the plus side, as I said, there are there are new stuff. There, there are new bits and pieces sort of happening all the time. People are coming to me with new ideas all the time. You know, and as I've always done, I'll continue just to simply work with what is available. Um, and look to sort of, you know, push it beyond the limits and the boundaries when the appropriate time comes. Cool. Uh, what events or competitions do you guys hold here? At the moment, we so we have uh, FGC meets going on uh, over the weekends, which are Smash Melee, Smash 4, Tekken, Street Fighter, Injustice. Um, you know, we'll, I'm, I'm looking to kind of sort of start catering to other stuff. A big one which I've always wanted to sort of be able to crack properly was um, FIFA. 
Okay. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean that that's consistently popular as a sort of professional and a casual game for people all year round. Uh, Mario Kart's another one. You know, the Switch, Nintendo Switch, is bringing us lots of multiplayer cooperative games, which on the big screens, you know, will present opportunities for tournaments as well as sort of, oh, yeah, of course. you know, running things like retro speed runs, uh, which people always find interesting. You know, we're getting to that. Have the competitions helped or hindered anything at all um, in general? It, it is a little frustrating for when people come in and um, can I play the PlayStation, please? Um, no, sorry, all the controllers are out um, because they're being used to say Tekken or Injustice or whatever. I mean, it doesn't happen that much, but on a busy weekend, you know, <laughs> I'll be offering, you know, at one point, all I had to offer someone who wanted to try out this RPG was a joystick, <laughs> huh. um, which doesn't really go sort of too well together because a lot of these fighting games are actually moving towards handheld controllers, uh, pads. Yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly in just this Mortal Kombat, um, you know, which only really, uh, in, you know, in terms of joystick games, leaves as the two sort of most popular um, entrants uh, would be Street Fighter and Tekken. And a lot of people play those on pad anyway. So we've already seen joysticks stop being referred to as joysticks and become known as fight sticks simply because any other genre that really used them is kind of faded out, shmups, yeah, platformers, yeah. you know, it's it's almost like arcade sticks really are becoming a thing of the past the death of mad cats doesn't really help yeah of course um you know i mean i think overall um arcade sticks while they'll always be in there as a niche uh i think you know the days of them kind of being the main way that fighting games are played they are slowly being phased out you already have to invest so much money in the console and the game and all the dlc to buy it that to throw another sort of 200 quid on top for one of those sort of um the last in the production line of Mad Cat sticks or import a Hori stick from overseas, you know, that's that's money that only maybe really a select few people are actually kind of prepared to sink into that one game. Yeah, yeah, of course, it gets uh, more expensive the more you want, the more you buy. Absolutely, but that's video games in general. It's always been like that. Those who will, will. Those who won't, don't, you know? It's true, it's true. Hmm. Uh, what's been the best bit about hard game in your experience from uh, when you started till now? Wow. Um, the fact that people keep coming back and keep telling their friends um, it really leads me to think okay you know we're doing something here and we're obviously doing it right to a degree um, there's always more that can be done um, and it's nice it's you know people forget that the arcade era uh, or generation spans well over 35 years right from Space Invaders sort of till now oh yeah of course it does yeah, yeah. yeah it's not yeah. like a console that was maybe available for yeah, five years yeah. or so then the next one so it's really very hard because you're aiming at so many different ages and demographics it's really very very hard to know sometimes what is going to be the real sort of period to focus on you know i mean there are people who are very kind of into the late 70s and the 80s my my and the early 80s my angle is more the late 80s so the era of cooperative gaming yeah, yeah. Um, into the 90s which led to the era of competitive gaming with the arrival of street fighter 2 and then more and more stuff like games like house of the dead time crisis daytona which are all iconic classics that yeah, everybody yeah. will recognize you know so i do have a certain angle when i'm doing it having said that i always like to listen to other people's thoughts and ideas if anyone listening to this has any suggestions feel free to fire them through you know cool cool what's been the worst bit about since you started till now anything terrible you're like i just want to give up lot, yeah i mean i'm not gonna lie i've had like you know these breakdowns <laughs> from time to time privately to myself where i just think to myself am i just being an idiot why do i continue to torture myself like this should I just get out while the going's good? Uh, is this a closed chapter? But the thing is, there's always, something will always happen. Someone will always say something to me that makes me kind of momentarily forget all of that and move on. The thing with Holger is it's massive uppers, massive, massive uppers. When, when things are good, they are really, really good. You know, I can have the best day in the world and, and leave feeling like, you know, on top of said world. Or I can basically have a day where I just don't want to leave my bedroom because I've been up for five minutes, I've looked at my phone and there's a whole list of problems and issues and blah, 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 blah. It is difficult, you know, it is incredibly difficult, but I try to surround myself with good, positive people, um, you know, who, who, who believe in the products um, and, you know, want to see it succeed. 
and I know these people exist. Yeah, and yeah. when you know something exists, it's a lot easier to believe in it. And if they believe in you, you know, you got to believe in them. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. So uh, E3 has been and gone. Mm -hmm. Did you see anything that you were like, yeah, I won that game or anything um, that stood out? Absolutely, I totally missed the whole of E3. Oh, no. I did, yeah, because um, this place leaves very little time for anything gaming that isn't related to the place if you see what I'm saying okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I spend I didn't realize um, because when I when I worked as a technician in the past I've had a lot of um, obviously colleagues but now doing it as a one-man band when everything is as old as it is um, it can be very difficult and frustrating for example I fixed the controls on dot on patchy yesterday turn around someone says to me oh um, you know one of the guns on house of the dead doesn't work and you know, you, you feel like bashing your head against the table because you think to yourself, will it ever get to a point where I've got no repairs to do and I can just put my feet up, catch my breath and maybe have a few minutes just to myself? And the answer is no. Yeah. You know, the answer is no. It's repairs are sadly part of the job. It's becoming harder and harder to locate spare parts, but I do what I can. Cool, cool. Uh, any other games in general you're looking forward to this year or the next? Um, Personally, I'm quite looking forward to the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, I don't know that they're going to split it up, make it individuals, they said. Well, you know, I mean... And you might be waiting 10 years as well, it is square. It's true, it's true, but the trailer got me hyped. Um, yeah. You know, um, I suppose in terms of games I'm looking forward to, uh, also Shenmue 3. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what's going on with that, but, you yeah, know... Yeah, it's kind of gone quiet yeah. for a while. Um, and in a way, I'm basically looking to see how, eventually, when Smash comes to the uh, Wii, uh, to the Switch, I'm looking to see how that's going to do. Um, is it going to... Because we, we know, you know, that it's not necessarily... People don't always pick up the sequel and drop the original. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you look at Smash Brothers Melee, for example, incredibly strong community of people who just refuse to let it die. To and, and, yeah, it's, yeah. and it's still building. You know, this game is like, what, 15 years old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's still... You know, the classic sometimes, you know, you... It's, I mean, for example, King of Fighters 98, arguably the best of the old generation yeah, definitely, of definitely. KOF games. And then 99 comes along, people are like, meh. Same with 2000, same with 2001. 2002 saw some life simply because they got rid of that horrid striker system, but ultimately 98 will always be remembered the pinnacle. as the pinnacle of the old series, you know? Sometimes you kind of have to think, you know, have we peaked or not? So, yeah. Well, a few things then. Yep. Uh, what plans do you have for hard gaming in the future and anything for the community to look forward to in general? Um, okay, so uh, pool tables and air hockey are on the way in. Cool. Um, I mentioned, I touched briefly earlier on the uh, probability of Made Cafe. Uh, that is happening, you know, we're in talks for that to sort of start sometime in August. Uh, the anime shop that we have downstairs, um, run by Richard, on a quick attack. Um, that's gonna, you know, continue to grow. The selection of machines will continue to grow. Our software library will continue to grow. And wherever possible, we'll look to break new ground. You know, we, there are a lot of things that we did first. For example, the whole pay a set fee, then everything is free to play. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that was us. Um, the whole kind of, you know, getting the school trips in, you know, for a bit of leisure and also a bit of a lesson in history for those involved in game design. You know, again, that was us. Um, there's really no shortage of possibilities because we're now in a generation where um, arcades aren't necessarily owned by stuffy old businessmen, they're owned by people who grew up in those arcades and want to see, you know, want to basically sort of bring that back but also with a view to help it evolve so that it works for the future. The focus cannot just be on arcade machines. You know, that will always be the large, a large part of the focus because it's what many people travel for. Um, but ultimately, we have to realize, I mean, you know, back in 2002 when I was running a computer exchange, um, you know, the, the NES was what people would say, oh, yeah, that was my first console. And, you know, the, the younger people now, the millennials, people in their late teens, early to sort of mid-twenties, they'll talk about how the N64 was yeah, their yeah. first console. So you see, gradually... You know, time waits for no man, woman, person. It moves on. Um, things do get left, you know, in the history books. We always get the little reminders, you know, the SNES Mini, uh, the NES Mini, etc. Um, but ultimately, you know, the future lies with the games that are to come. Um, and that's what we're going to, you know, that's what we're really going to be focusing on with us, you know, with us 
as strongly as po wherever as strongly as possible to sort of uh, drag the past with us for those yeah, who yeah. basically want the nostalgia. Cool. So quite a few things for people to look forward to. Absolutely. Uh, before we wrap up the interview, yeah. anything particular you want to add? Anything you want to uh, let the community know? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> we were gone for a year. We managed to survive. Thank you to um, everyone out there who has and continues to support, continues to tell their friends, continues to make the visit down here, continues to come and help out, help me out with repairs and the things that I don't understand, like PC configuration, etc., etc. Uh, bless you guys all. Um, Thank you very much, and um, hopefully see you all soon. It is all about the community, the community that helps to is. drive, they do. Absolutely, they really, really do, because without them, it's nothing more than a glorified games room. That is true, that is and true. It's a very big games room, though. It is, but it's still more than one person would realistically need to themselves, you know? That is true. Mm. Uh, lastly, where are you, and what social media are you on? Okay, we are in East Croydon at the Whitgift Centre. Uh, the postcode is CR91SB. Uh, catch us on Facebook at The Heart of Gaming and on Twitter at The Hog UK. So you heard it here, guys. If you want to come down, come down. Mark will gladly shake your hand and bring you in, and you guys can play games as much as you want. To your heart's content. That's it, guys. Thank you very much, Mark. No it's problem at all. My pleasure. I've been the Fire Thunder Zombie for the Fire Thunder Gaming Channel. You can catch me at FT Zombie on Twitter. And thank you very much. Remember, if it ain't Fire or Thunder, it ain't gaming. Catch you later.